This is William King Hollis, international motivational speaker and rocking with the best podcast in the world, Black Men Sunday. It's a Black Man Sunday. Time to put all childish things away. I refuse to be the man I was yesterday. Gotta put my best foot forward and elevate. What's going on, everybody? This is Black Men Sundays. I'm your host, Corey Sylvester Murray, and we're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about finance, and of course, we're talking about business. And before we introduce today's guest, my man Eric from Huntsville, aka Hunts Vegas, Alabama. Who do you have for our Black Men Sunday spotlight, my brother? Hey, thanks a lot for that introduction, Corey. Hey, today I want you to meet Troy Smith. Now, he's the founder and CEO of G1 Commercial Mortgage, which is a face-based private credit fund based in Charles County, Maryland, the wealthiest African-American county in the nation. Now, his company is a direct lender that offers finance and options to real estate investors, and he is the first African-American mortgage lender to have delegated underwriting authority of over $100 million in warehouse line credit. Now, Troy positioned his company with the private mortgage market uh, by creating bank alternative lending capital for mortgage products that will be very challenging for individuals to find. Now, they have created this first ever mortgage revenue share network, and he's also for the first time a national private credit fund and has agreed to share the origination fees charged on a business purpose mortgage transactions with anyone who shares their loan programs with others. Now, revenue partners have the ability to earn up to 50% revenue of shares on each transaction. Now, this revenue sharing um, system encourages team growth as they will pay and override in all volume created through a team channel. Now, this company creates a wealth development opportunity for the average person that will otherwise never experience the benefits of mortgage origination commissions. Now, however, this is now, however, this is not just the tip of the iceberg when discussing Troy's overall financial and economic visions. He is also the managing partner of the United States Economic Right Coalition. He, the ERC is a private credit fund with a demand for a unique set of limited partners. Um, the limited partners will consist of a correlation of an African American owned banks that pool a portion of their dollars within the within the fund to provide responsible credit capital to businesses and individuals that are often overlooked and underrepresented. That's my spotlight today. Again, this is my brother, Mr. Troy Smith. Now, Corey, back to you. Okay, Eric, you said Charles County, Maryland. I'm, you know, I'm, I remember Charles uh, City, Virginia. This mm -hmm. man said Charles County, Maryland. You know, my brother Kalali, he lived up in Maryland and, you know, he's been getting money for a minute. I wonder how close he yeah. is to that county. So we're going to have to find out later on in the show. But how's everything going in Hunts Vegas, man? Man, everything's lovely, man. You know, we next. Well, we have homecoming coming up. So uh, we getting ready for that. We play yep. Tuskegee. Ooh, ooh, who Y'all playing who? Tuskegee, man. Oh, man. That's the that's... only Tuskegee, you know, you know, Alabama. Hey, you know, we we the biggest state. They have the most HBCUs in one state. So, hey, we got ski, yeah, ski, get ski on the plane. Oh, man, you know, you know, you know, that's funny you saying that because uh, our guest speaker today, if I remember correctly, he went to Tuskegee. Okay, he know what's up. So he, yeah. know, he know what's up. He yeah, know up. What's up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. about to come through there, about to come through there, dog walk y'all yeah. this week, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a former alum now. I'm in, I'm in the Sports Hall of Fame at Tuskegee. Okay. So, yeah, that, that, yeah, Tuskegee, that's, that's home for me, man. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And y'all hearing that voice. Yo, Eric, I appreciate that Black Men Sunday spotlight. You hearing that voice. That's our yes. guest speaker today. We about to get motivated. This is a motivational speaker. This brother's an author. We talking about the best gifts come from the bottom. We about to find about all about that. This brother went from homelessness. Now this brother's leading a whole generation. This brother has over 900 million YouTube views. I had to clean my glasses. I know it's time for me to go to the eye doctor. I said, hold on, 900 million views? The number one football speech in the world. Man, this brother spoke. This brother was paid to speak at Milan's Fashion Week. I think he was the first to do it. This brother's an NFL Super Bowl speaker. 
man william king hollis man i could go on all day welcome to black men sundays brother how you doing man I i'm doing amazing man blessed to be alive and blessed to be on the live with my great brothers today man talking life yeah definitely and that's what we do man so i you know our show's about generational wealth finance and business first off i want to say congratulations i see you purchased a 25 percent stake in the legends miami shoe store so congratulations on that my brother thank you so much man thank you I, um, you know, it, it's been a long time. Like I said, it's funny. You know, I can learn a lot from you guys' lives and a lot of your knowledge you guys kick weekly. I've been blessed to to make an amazing killing, 45, between 45, 65K per speaking engagement. I really ain't never had to sell any product. I, 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 everything I ever got and everything I'm obtaining is, is from my voice and the gift God gave me, man. So um, I'm just now getting into the investment side and, 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 and um, you know, just – just learning how to how to grow the dollar and make my dollar work for me. Um, going to my story, King, as you know, I was homeless. So I, I started getting a lot of these big checks and money, you know, out of the blue. You know, and my first one was in Milan for $10,000. So that was like, I only spoke on the stage for probably about five to six minutes. And I was paid that. So I went from that, sleeping in my tours in Huntsville, uh, to, 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 to fly to Milan. Doing what I, I was doing in that football speech was also shot in Huntsville the day after I was evicted from my apartments in Huntsville. So it, it, it's it, it, I, I can honestly say, man, like um, it's 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 a blessing for what you kings do because it's a lot of young kings like myself that garnered a lot of attention, made a name for themselves. But we learn backwards. You feel what I'm saying? We, we get the money and then we got to learn how to use that dollar the proper way and, and I'm blessed to, to to be on the live with guys that focus on teaching young kings like myself and brothers all over the globe um how to make their money work for them. Yeah, definitely. And I kind of want to take it back. So at what point this is kind of like a double so double swore, double on tonda kind of question. So at what point in your life did you realize you had a voice as a black man? But then at what point did you realize you had a voice, meaning I can get paid to use my voice? I mean, I never knew. I, I I really ain't never really get to a point like that, King. I was in the brink of suicide, mental health, on the brink of taking my life. My mother passed over heroin overdose. My father was incarcerated. So, you know, I cracked my vertebrae, uh, went over to Canada, ended up not making the team because I had, ended up finding out I had an L1 vertebrae crack. Ended up homeless in um, Dover, Delaware, where, uh, you know, um, one of my teammates that I played arena football with prior to that, prior to going to Canada, uh, was out there. And I went out there to stay with him. I was bouncing house to house. He was staying at co old college friends' houses. And I'm I'm just bouncing around. I got nowhere to go. So I got to, I, I got, he ended up getting in a car accident. Parents made him come back home. And now I'm by myself, homeless in Dover, Delaware. I'm putting suicidal messages on, um, uh, you know, on YouTube. I mean, on, on Facebook. And one of my old arena coaches that I broke the single, say, single game sack record uh, against him, saw the message. And he reached out. At this time, he didn't know I had an L1 crack vertebrae. He's like, Will, I want to give you an opportunity, you know, to play football. And I, and I got to tell you guys the story uh, because it's, it, 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 it molds up to it. Um, you know, he brought me down to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He came and picked me up, um, let me sleep in his basement for a night where his wife allowed me to sleep in his basement, uh, sent me out to Hershey, PA, I ended up playing football out there, uh, never made it to the season. We was training. I was working at the Hershey Giant Grocery Store out there. And uh, Marcus Poston had an arena team called the Harrisburg Stampede. He owned it. We played at the Hershey Center. Um, and right before the season uh, started, Coach didn't know I had an L1, L1 vertebrae uh, crack. And basically, um, God stopped the whole season. Marcus Colton canceled the season. Um, the team folded, and I never ended up playing. So after the season, I ended up telling Coach Nowitowski that I had an L1 vertebrae crack. He was like, basically, Will, you was getting ready to play this season, and I was homeless. I was like, Coach, I was homeless. This is the only place I can live, and, you know, I knew I'd be okay. Uh, so he gave me a coaching job. I ended up having the number one defensive line in the league. Uh, I was still, you know, bouncing from house to house, sleeping outside, sometimes sleeping in a hotel with players. Our arena team was very, very poor, brother. Um, a startup team. And, um, you know, one day I was sleeping at the Turkey Hill gas station and a teacher named Miss Robinson was sitting over there and she was like, basically, 
came out the store and saw me was like, you're the coach that coached with the ASI Panthers. I brought some of my, my, my uh, youth to the game and I saw you talking to the players. I would love for you to come speak to a group of young men. So I went and I spoke, King, um, that same day, within five minutes, had him in tears. It was the first time I ever spoke about my story. I was uh, walking back to the Abraham Lincoln Hotel where I chilled at in the evening time, in the daytime, also used a computer sometime where the team stayed at. And uh, five minutes before I got back to the, the hotel, um, I was literally about to commit suicide, King. I, I, I was the first time talking about my mother's death. It was the first time talking about my father. And the, honestly, the first time talking about my life. I didn't realize how much I really went through. And it broke me down. So I'm going to the hotel, getting ready to commit suicide. Uh, probably about 10 steps before I got to the hotel, I got a call from Ms. Robinson. She said, Will, how much you charge to speak? I ain't know nothing about speaking. I said $75, $100 or something like that. And uh, uh, I went into the hotel, agreed to do the speech for like $75, $100 and turned on, typed in motivational speaker in the, in, the, in the hotel computer, King. When I typed that in, Les Brown popped up. I saw him in the Georgia Dome. I saw how he spoke and kept his, his smile on his face when he talked about his pain. And I just copied and pasted and put my own story in front of it. And I went in, did a standing ovation. Fast forward uh, nine years later, over 900 million views and all those accolades you spoke on in the beginning of the, of the thing. I didn't, I didn't pick speaking. It chose me. Wow, that's amazing, man. And, you know, I was on uh, Instagram yesterday just, you know, doing my normal morning routine. And I saw you were going live with some brothers. And you basically said, you know, um, the fact that once you got to the point of financial success or success in life, that your parents were already gone, brother. Yeah. So I'm just saying from that point of view, I mean, how do you enjoy the success knowing that okay the, the the people that brought you on this earth the people that you know when 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 you got to the point of i'm here now they weren't like how did you you know because we talk about mental health with black men sundays as well we've had mental health experts and all but how do you from a mental health ex, uh, a mental health perspective how do you even appreciate the success i mean to me I really look at the job that I do is not something that I need to feel successful for. It's my job. You know, it's something God gave me. And in return, just like anybody working at a gas station or, or, or my brother, Kalai uh, Adobe, uh, 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 giving the king a job, he's giving him an opportunity to take care of himself. And nobody ever said you was going to be Warren Buffett when you did this. Uh, maybe God was just going to give you enough to take care of your family and be content with the life that you have. I got to a point in my career, King, when I realized, like, I even asked God, like, God, was I even supposed to be famous when I'm doing this? You know what I mean? Or am I just supposed to be another messenger that so out of so many other messengers you created to, to help a generation understand in layman terms? And I had the ability to do that. Also realizing that I got a I got a fly or die mentality. You talk about the story of the eagle, and when a mother has a, a nest full of eagles, um, when the eagle becomes too big, she kicks that eagle out, and that eagle got two choices: fly, or die. So in my life, I, I realized that God always gave me something to remind me of the reason why I have to fly, and 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 I had no choice. And I talk about this in a lot of my podcasts where I tell people like. If when you was a little boy and, and, and that dog broke loose and he was chasing you, you start running at a speed you never thought you could run. And you start jumping over fences as tall as, uh, as a building and you never thought you had the power to do so. So that's what my life did. And I think a lot of black men uh, 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 adopt this mentality that um, when you have no choice but to fight King, you go fight your ass off if you want to live. And I wanted to live, King. I wanted to, I already been through hell. Okay, my, my, my mom passed, my pop, my father was murdered this past Christmas day. But God told me, he said, I gave you a job. Fuck all that. That ain't got nothing to do with your calling on your life. Because brother, when you die, you go back into that dirt alone. You go back into that dirt alone, and, 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 and when you when you look at that and you realize and you really hear the most high and you really understand that you only got a moment to live, you don't have time to cry, my brother. When you got babies and sons and daughters, 
You ain't got time to cry, my brother. And, and, and in Islam, I'm a Muslim. So uh, it ain't my job to bring that pain to my father and the life my father lived into the household with my, my wife and my sons and my children. I got to be a man. I got to be a leader. And a lot of men got to realize this. We ain't got no time for no fucking emotions. Because I'm going to tell you now, in this world, as a black man, you sit and cry on your emotions, they'll finish you off. They'll put a bullet in your head and life will finish you off. They don't care about that. If you don't show no fight, if you don't, if you don't love your life and your family more than your pain, then yeah, you're gonna crumble. But but what does that make you? What does that make you? That don't make you a king. That make you a boy. And, and a lot of people like to use this word king. It's a responsibility. Before you become a king, you gotta take a law. You gotta take a real law. When you walk around talking about you a king, the first thing I ask a king is what law you do. Everything in the history of the kingdom. One king had to fall for another one to rise. That's the way it goes. And I got a, I'm a king. So when I lost my father on Christmas Day, that was the last step before I became a real king. That was the last step before I never had to say it again. The world will recognize. It. It's like a game in levels of video game. God will keep rising you up. He'll keep, but you got to be equipped for it. If you ain't equipped for it, he not going to give it to you. So he said, Will, you went through all this pain. So now if I send you soldiers that just lost their mama and their daddy, guess what? You got what it takes to make them, them kings fight. You got what it takes because you're not talking out of emotion. You're talking off experience. My father was stabbed up nine times left downtown Detroit for days. I had to fight with everything in my soul to stay here for my family. And people ask me, Will, how did you make it through it? How did you keep going? How did you keep doing these interviews? How did you keep moving? Because I ain't had no fucking choice, King. We ain't got no choice, King. You can sit, cry, bicker, listen to all these fake-ass soft words, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to be a gladiator, boy. You want to make it in this world, you're going to have to be a gladiator. You're going to have to be able to walk, wipe the blood off your sleeve and keep moving. That's the way it is for you, brother. And I ain't going to sugarcoat it for you. It don't get no easy. This shit hard, but it's worth it. You feel what I'm saying? It's worth it. So it all comes down to who wants this shit the most, who want life the most, who want to change their family tree the most. That's what it comes down to. That one is rotten. This one is new. I'm going to water it different. I'm going to nourish it different. I'm going to protect it different. So it's going to grow different. And I'm going to be successful. We're going to be successful. That's my mentality. Our show's about, you know, generational wealth. So I'm I'm glad you started to show off like that, man. Wow. But I mean, let's get back to this this speeches, man. I mean, you've spoken for celebrities, actors, professional athletes. I think I saw on your Instagram you had some guys lifting weights. Somebody brought a pizza in. And I mean, I was like, man, this brother's out here. So I'm just saying, at what point? Did you set the prices? Because I also did some research and saw, you know, 45, 50K. I'm like, man, I need some of that money. I think I speak well, too. I want to get in the game, too. So I'm just saying, at what point were you able to say, okay, I'm going to charge this per speech? And then at what point did you decide that, okay, well, because I, I, I'm going to keep it real. Like, that's why I love Black Men. Because like, I like it. Because this is my chance to keep it all the way real. Like, if I said I'm going to charge somebody 30000 for a speech and they said man i just give you 10 i might be like all right i'll take the 10 so at what point i'm just gonna keep it real bro somebody said i'll give you 10 stacks for a five minute speech all right cool so i'm just saying at what point did you set your bar for the prices because like i said i mean you spoke at milan fashion week man so i mean that's that's a big deal so how are you able to you know right, set right. those stages up uh, to be honest with you, King, I, I, I watched this one speech by Jim Rohn, and he spoke about increasing your value. And it stuck with me in my whole career, since the beginning of my career. Every time I was denied a great opportunity, I never got angry at the individuals. I told myself that I got to increase my value. So when I didn't get that first NFL commercial, I said I got to increase my value. I got it. When I didn't have the big name, I made history in Milan. When I didn't have the marketing team, the management team, all that stuff, I got booked for the Super Bowl. So what I did was, King, I constantly lived a life of increasing my value. 
Because once you increase your value, you no longer have to bargain. When you make history, when you're number one, you no longer have to negotiate. See, the Eric Thomases, the Ixi, all those guys, they're going to look like the number one. But when you look, dig up the numbers, I'm the number one. So when I go to the table, in a negotiation table, and they see my numbers, they see my impact. I just received the Ambassador of Peace in Kingston, Jamaica, the most, one of the most dangerous cities in the world, and play my speeches on a speaker throughout Tivoli Garden. What I'm trying to tell you is, King, is that there's no price limit when you work for God, brother. It ain't no cap on this. And if I make history, you can't deny me. I'm a black man. I knew this from the beginning. If I'm not number one, they won't pay me what I want. But now that I'm number one and I don't look like them, I don't act like them, I don't do the conferences with them, I go my own way. God told me in the beginning of my career, whatever way they go, go the other way. That's why I have platinum spoken word album. That's why I got a distribution deal with Empire. Because God said, think outside the box. Don't be nothing like them. Then I had people like Nipsey Hussle reach out, teach me things about being an independent king. That's the first celebrity to ever follow me, if, they, if people don't know. Because he's seen it in me. You know, when, when, when you know, hey, everybody ain't got this type of mentality, king. They don't have that eat off the land mentality, dog. I'm a, I'm a wolf, fam. And when I climb mountains, I don't be content. I look for a bigger mountain. Every day I wake up like I ain't got shit. Because once you lose that mentality, you lost everything. There's so many multimillionaires walking around and investors that's walking around with all this money, but they ain't got no purpose behind it. So every night they lay down with all this money and they feel like they're nothing. Your bank account says a million, but your soul says nothing. You have nothing to excite you. You have nothing to keep you going. And when God put that in you, King, when he put that mission on you, and you follow the, the, the instructions of the mission, you will never lose, King. So I'm going to go up to a million dollars one day. I'm going to go up to 500000 I know Tony Robbins just got $8 million the other day for two days. So me as a black king, what does that say to me? If he can do it, I can do it too. All I got to do is increase my value. Fuck talking about how good I am. Just keep showing the action. Keep showing up. Keep making history. Keep doing this with no manager, no marketing team, no ads. Keep going viral, Will. Then guess what? When we go to the table, anybody that denied me the first time going to pay me double. You understand me? You told me no one, if you ever told me once, no, you're going to pay me double. Now the shoe's on my foot because they need my impact. They need my voice. They don't want to admit it. I ain't going to walk around dressed up like I'm Malcolm X or I'm an empty. But I bet you this, I'm one of the best black fucking speakers on this planet. You put me in a room with any speaker you want to put me in and I'm going to wash his ass. I'm gonna show them with I'm gonna show them what God look. I'm gonna show them how God really speaks through me. Because I know I was a special ass dude. I ain't over 900 million views for no reason. Because you're not gonna beat me because you can't beat God. God will pick the most inconsistent man. And he'll blow life into that man. And he's gonna use that man that comes from the dirt because he don't never want that man to look down on nobody. Because I don't look down on my brothers and sisters. But one thing I can honestly say, I know God gave me a gift to uplift the dead black man. That's the same reason why Abdul Sharif Muhammad and the Nation of Islam came and started teaching me four years ago. The minister said, Will, uh, the messenger said that one day that the, the, the church will be empty and, and, and the streets will be full because the message is going to come from the streets. All the people that got the, the, the pulpit is becoming empty. But the street is becoming full. You notice? You notice it? Everybody's in the street. The, same, the, the souls that need to be saved is in the street. So you can't reach them from the pool pit because they ain't coming in there. God said the kingdom is voice activated. I was a special ed student, couldn't read till I was 16 years old. Didn't even know my multiplications. 
But if you search on YouTube right now, you put best black speaker. I want you to watch God do it. I want you to put best football speech ever. I want you to watch God do it. I want you to put the word on Google, operate in chaos, and watch your face pop up. I didn't have to be like them. I just had to be myself. And if you're looking for the answer of how you become a multimillionaire or a 50 or $60,000 speaker, one, stay yourself. Two, keep increasing your value. And three, never forget where you fucking start. You'll win in life, my brother. Oh, man, I'm I'm loving that. I'm loving that. I'm at the... Call my man Juan down at Legends Miami. You know, when he actually came on Black Men's Sundays when he was uh Legends Orlando. Um, and I see you bought a 25% stake in that business. So That's I was gonna say, yeah, no doubt. So you know, I look on your Instagram pretty frequently. I see you know you you win the kicks game as well. Cause uh we did a show with him called uh You Have Sneakers, You Have Well for the listeners in the know that didn't hear that want to check it out. But and today, if you have purpose, you got well. That's what it is today. If you got purpose, you got wealth. You rich already. That's my whole story. That's why I tell it so much. Because it's, it's somebody out there right now can't even believe they nothing. I was in a shelter when I became a speaker, bro. I was in a shelter, bro. So my purpose became my biggest blessing. My pain became my biggest blessing. And once you stop crying about the pain, and start embracing the pain, that's when the pain going to start lifting you up. It's a double-edged sword. Thank God created pain as a double-edged sword. One stabs you and kills you. The other lifts you up. You get what I'm saying? But you got to die to live, bro. You got to die to live. He'll take you all the way to this zombie state till you realize that you have no control over your soul. Then you'll start calling his name, and then he start to pour life into you. And then you're grateful for the life because it was just in this, this zombie state. And then you start feeling again. You start feeling life again. You start feeling like everything can happen. And then you're gone. Nobody can stop you because you died to live. Bro. You died to live. Every man that walked this earth right now, he got to die to live. You got to lay it all down. You got to admit that, it, that your life is not in your control. And then the right driver will step in because I can tell y'all I can't sit up here and tell y'all no crazy blueprint this is God bro I gotta tell you the truth king it's God that's been my marketer my manager who you think got me booked for the Super Bowl God who you think put me in my line my first speech ever God ain't nobody else can do it and God left me so full to stand here on this pot on, on this show right now with you today brother and I can say Ain't no man do this. Ain't no man do this. Do your research on Ain't no man do this. When Les Brown reached out to me, he was in the hospital listening to my speech called The Dirt. See how God worked? <laughs> you see how God worked? So look, thank you full circle. I, I listened to Les Brown the first time I ever speak, right? But Les Brown listening to me while he in the hospital getting a blood transfusion for cancer. The words that he heard was, I didn't come this far. To only come this far. He called me on the phone. Team got in touch. They flew in. Sat down with me. Passed the torch to me. God did this. That's why they don't collab with me. And work with me bro. I'm spoiled. I ain't spoiled by the world and man. I'm spoiled by God bro. I'm really spoiled by God bro. I'm a spoiled child of God. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful. Because all I ever did was use these vocal cords he gave. And he gave me everything. I'm only getting bigger. It's so funny that I am 33 years old. This is my, this is, this is the God year. 33 years old. October 4th, I turned 34 years old. Three years away from being the same age as my mother when she passed away. I count them days. That's why I count. That's my birthday. Once I hit that age, the year my mama passed away, see a party they ain't never, I don't even like parties. I don't like gifts. I don't like celebrate. I don't like none of that. Because that's the way my mind is, King. Fuck what happened yesterday. What we doing today? I, I live by a what now mentality. If I do something great, when I made history in Milan, I ask God, what now? What's next? 
And when you live by that and you don't record, you don't record your wins, you continue to win. Because you keep the same feeling when you had no wins. You wake up and you work the same way as when you had no wins. That's how I win. Because when I was in the shelter working up at 4.30 and 5.30 in the morning to make those posts, I still do it to this day. I just do it from a comfortable pillow top. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. Purpose, baby. That's the most important thing we got to realize on this call. Your purpose is bigger than your circumstances. It's bigger than that pain or that mental health you're going through. Purpose takes you to a level where you never thought you could be, man. And that's all I can say to people. You want to change your life? You want to make money? You want to be the greatest version of yourself? Fight for your purpose and not the money. And watch the money chase you. My purpose wasn't to be number one speaker in the world. My purpose was to save a billion people in the world and die a happy man. So when I get out this, when I get out of this world, my ancestors waiting for me because I gave everything I had inside of me, all my pain to my people. I poured it all out to my people. When they killed my father, I could have retaliated, but I stayed on the course with God. That cross, that, 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 that crossway in life that we go through as a man. It's only God himself the reason why I'm even on this call. Because when my father died, King, I no longer wanted to live. I no longer wanted to be here. I fought everything in my body to be right here where I'm at right now. The biggest fight, one of the biggest fights I've had to do in my life. When my father came home from prison, all I wanted to do was save him. Probation wouldn't allow him to leave the state of Michigan. When I played football, all I wanted to do was save my mama. So this is what God did. God said, Will. You can't give me all of you if you're still trying to save people that that is my job to save. So I realized that it's not my job to save anybody. It was my job to live the life and do what I'm doing right now in my life. God took my mother, cuddled her, took care of her. So every day I wake up, I no longer have to worry about where my mama is or if she hurt or if she's doing drugs. He took my father. So my father no longer had to hurt from coming home from the University of Indiana, finding out his brother was murdered an hour before he was supposed to pick him up. My father no longer has to hurt no more. God took him away. So now all the love I have for my mama and my daddy, I put it in my people. So God said, look, we, I'm gonna take all this away from you. Now you're gonna save my people. You're gonna take the, all that knowledge, all that pain, and you're gonna save my people. Because I equipped you for it. I gave you a dose by taking your mama, that was just a test. Then I took your daddy. I broke your back. Guess what? I'm still here. I'm still here. And I'm stronger than ever. You feel what I'm saying? How can you fucking stop me now? I'll whoop the devil ass. How can you stop me now? And that's what these men got to say. I've been through all this fucking pain. How can you stop me now? I took all them losses. How can you stop me now? You can't. Only way you can stop me if you kill. Because it's written. My life was written in my mama's womb. That's why I know I won't lose. That's why the brothers that watch me is so amazed. They can't believe what I'm doing because it ain't never been for them to understand. And I never wanted them to believe in me. I just wanted them to watch. We got their attention now. Hey, brother, this is uh, this is Kalali. Um, yeah, man, you definitely you definitely have a powerful message, and I, I enjoy hearing um everything you're talking about. You know how you how you you've overcome a lot of the struggles and things like that now on. Um, you know, now, you know, it, it seems like you're on the other side of it now, right? You went through the struggles and now you're starting to reap the benefits and the success and things like that. So, you know, one of the things that we've always talked about on, on Black Men Sunday is like, you know, when you're at that, when you're, when you're, you're, you know, when you're going through the struggle, that's survival mode. You know what I mean? Like, you, like, I mean, I mean, you probably know better than I know, you know what I'm saying? That's survival mode, you know what I mean? But when you get to a level where you have some success, what happens is you get time. You know what I'm saying? You get time and you can sit back and think and you can sit back and plot a little bit better. You can sit back and strategize. And what goes along with that, you know, you talked about, um, we talked about how earlier you had mental health struggles and some of those mental health struggles, you know, if you don't address them, because we talked about mental health on this show before, if you don't address them, you know what I mean? They can impact you. So I'm just wondering, you know, from one brother to another, um, how you handling your mental health these days? Man, I I I I say 
the best thing I got is my eight month year old son and my beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. I, I am I am abundantly blessed. Um, mm -hmm. God didn't give me no money until I had a family. So I'm a husband, full time husband. My wife, full time mama, don't work for nobody and 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 work just work with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know I I I have so much. I don't have that much time on my hands. It's full of my my son. Um, I got my beautiful daughters. Um, I got my family, man. I just bought a house. Actually, moved in on the first. Just got my first home. Congratulations! Um, out here in Georgia. So, man, I'm I, I God God set all that up for me, man. Like when my dad, my son was born eleven days before my pops passed away. So you could just imagine how God set that up. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have made it without being able to wake up and see my beautiful son face every single day. Him yeah. smiling at me. Him looking like my dad, him being like my dad, hands like my dad, and they say when when God takes something away, He adds something to the earth. So I'm I'm thankful that God put that in my face so blatantly, um, and it showed me that you ain't alone, baby boy. I just gave you him for you for you to raise him and, and get him a life that your father wished he could have gave you. So you do it right, and I'm I'm doing it. I'm crushing it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So talk to you. So talk to us a little bit about that, man. What's the importance in family and building all of this that you want to build right now? I think family is the final chapter to a man's life. Mm. You know, I don't believe you reach your final chapter as a man until you walk into a house and see a family. Mm. I mean, I tell everybody, the richest man in the world is not the man with millions of dollars in his bank account, but the richest man in the world is the man that gets to come home to his family, set at a dinner table that he built in a home that he paid for and say, this is mine. And if a man doesn't never have that, never, never, never um, have the opportunity to experience that, man, that man ain't never lived. And, um, you know, I think it's a waste of a man's life to not have a family. And uh, I think that's how important it is. It's, it's very detrimental to your success. You know, I really believe, you know, my secret to my business has really been non-accessibility mm -hmm. and not being seen and not being a whore to everything. When everybody went out to the Earn Your Leisure Conference, I'm not going. I don't want you to be able to see me. When you went out to the Revolt Summit, I'm not going. I don't want you to be able to see me. I want it to be an exclusivity to me, just like the brand Rolls Royce and any of those other things, any of those other major brands. If you keep showing your face, popping up on everybody uh, podcast, being being a whore, a media whore, um, you'll get old, man. People will get tired of you. But when you keep popping out, you, I got to I gotta take time off and stay out of the media so I can soak up the world, man. Talk to that homeless man. Talk to that drug-addicted mother. Get some real life put into me um, mm -hmm. so I can come back and get a world something they never heard before and not something they heard before. A lot of people in the industry right now that's speaking, they're they not saying nothing new. Um, when I say only in the womb of a woman can a man breathe on the world, you ain't, water, you ain't never heard that in your life. You get what I'm saying? A lot of things that I say, they ain't never heard in their life. Like, give your dream. Give your life to your dream. You know, your dream will give, give you life. Give you the dream life that you've been looking for. There's a lot of things that I say that I, I, I live by this. Even when I play football, I don't want to play the game, King. I want to change the game. I don't want to do nothing nobody else has ever done. I don't want to say anything nobody else has ever seen. They, and and I got to they I gotta say and They got to say it when they say ain't nothing new under the sun. You a damn lie. You a lie. As long as God keep creating new creatures and new men, it's something new under the sun. Now it's interesting because you know, and I fully believe you. You know, I you know, I understand about walking walking God's plan. So I fully believe you when you say walking God's plan. But in the midst of you walk you walking God's plan, you are dropping a lot of gems that people can hold on to in terms of how they can how they can run their strategy if they if they really paying attention. Um. You talk. You spoke about. You know. You spoke about. You know. Uh, young brothers having a having a fight today. You know, what I'm saying to 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 attain success, to follow their dreams, and things like that. Um, what tools do you think are necessary in that fight? The first first tool for any man going off on any journey is to stabilize and get in control of his emotions. Mm. Number one, emotions is the killer to every successful individual man woman on this earth. Um, I, I say it all the time. I talked about women. I tell men, you want to learn how to dodge a, a terrible woman? Uh, stay away from a very, very emotional woman because she will betray a, a man. Uh, 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 when you're building a team, stay away from a very, very emotional man that cannot take constructive criticism. He will destroy your whole company. The second thing I would need them to understand is ego, eliminate it. You want to be a successful man? 
and you have an ego, it's going to hold you back. Because if a man is looking at you and you and you never seem like you need help, he will never help you. So a lot of people are out here not getting help because they act like they know it all. Mm -hmm. Eliminate your ego and become more of a listener than a talker. That's two. The third thing I need you to do is recognize that thing that is easy to you and amazing to the world. Mm -hmm. You found what you were born to do when it becomes easy to you and amazing to the world. It'll be the easiest thing you ever do. Mm. Simple. That's all my three, three, three of my uh, keys. Mm. That's yeah. That's that's deep, man. That's that's really deep, man. All right, I got I got one more for you. Then I'm gonna get out your way. Um, uh, can you you talked about you talked about when you get to when you get to a mountain, right? You always looking for a bigger mountain to climb. Can you talk to us a little bit uh, more about that mentality, like? Like looking for bigger challenges once you once you overcome something. How do you keep that up? What's the mentality that goes behind keeping that up? All the echoes of the doubters. Everybody that ever told me that I couldn't. That's all I hear when I get to the top of the mountain. You can't. You won't. And I say I will. I just look for bigger opportunities. That what now mentality. What's next? What's next? They said I they said I couldn't do this. Now let me do something that I think I can do. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you taking your time, man. It's been a joy listening to you today, man. And man, it's been an honor, as King. Said, as we said, you know, you say you're on the jet plane, you know what I'm saying? Make it on the spaceship then. <laughs> oh no, man. I'm I'm parking because I got my brothers to pick up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I got my brothers said. to pick up. I got a lot more brothers to pick up that look just like me, come come from the slum slums, just like me. The yeah. trenches. I tell everybody, the internet cut out the middleman. That's real. There's no middleman no more. That's real. That's real. Kick the door down and keep it open. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. <laughs> That's all I got for you. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Great information, man. Before I let you get out of here, first off, man, you enjoying yourself on Black Men Sundays, brother? Man, it's one of the greatest, greatest shows I ever had a chance to be a part of in my life. Wow. I'm, man, we loving that, man. We got the number one motivational speech expert in the world saying, oh, Oh man, Black Men Sundays, we we out of here. So hey, before I let you go, man, I want to talk a little YouTube because I feel like you know I see all the time, you know, if you have a business, if you you know get on YouTube, get the YouTube money. I'm even seeing a lot of businesses that got a lot of money from advertisements now are taken to the YouTube to generate that income. So I mean, you know, you 900 million YouTube views, so you know what a YouTube check look like, you know. I'm still trying to get one. So what tips can you give the brothers out there that are entrepreneurs, business owners that, you know, want to get on YouTube? What's some good YouTube advice to start so, to, to start monetizing? That's so crazy you said that. So everybody asked me, well, how did you do it? Um, so how I did it was, it's called collaboration. It's about looking at, looking at people that's doing the same thing you're doing, but they got more followers than you. But the good thing is the audience is looking for the same thing you're doing. So what you want to do is you want to collaborate. When you collaborate, you want them to add your subscription, your Instagram page, all of that at the bottom. So when they're watching this video, they can, they can subscribe to your channel. You want to look for the biggest giants on YouTube and collaborate with them. If you collaborate with them, you'll get watch time hours faster than you would usually do if you was doing it by yourself. Now you're getting your money up. Now you're getting companies that want to partner with you. So, for instance, if you, like me, I, I partner with a company called Motiversity. Motiversity is mainly, they're in um, uh, 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 Al, Al, Alger, Algeria, Canada, Al, Alberta, Canada. I'm sorry. Alberta, uh, Canada. And um, they fan bases all throughout Europe, all over the world. So I was like, damn, how can I get my, my message out to the whole entire world um, without having this platform? Okay, I don't have a platform, but they do. So give them a speech that's fucking dynamic and incredible. Then let them drop it. They're dropping in Spanish, Japanese, and everything. Now let's negotiate. I gave them a free sample. You ever heard like when you in the streets, they, they, the dope dealer go out and give you a free sample. I give them a free sample. They eat it up, they hooked. So when they come back, I'm like, hey, now I want 60, 40 split for everything you post in my work because that one did amazing. Um, okay, you got a deal, Will. Deal. So now I'm getting 60%. Now I don't even matter if I'm making money for my YouTube channel. I'm getting 60% of everything they making. And they on, they, they in Japan. They they in uh, 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 Mexico. Uh, they in uh, Germany. They all over the world. They got translating, translating my speeches. 
but I still get 60% of all money residual. Right now, residual income motiversity, I'm an $8,000, $10,000 a month check getter. I get $8,000, $10,000 for sitting on my ass. I don't have to move, and I'm going to get that for the rest of my life. These are, I got to, I get this for the rest of my life. And what you guys got to understand about speeches, um, speeches, you ever heard of the I Have a Dream speech? Do you still remember that speech? Speeches don't get old, so I'm rich forever. Definitely. And what about, you know, because I see, you know, on Instagram, you over 100,000 followers as well. I see a lot of brothers buy bots. They do things of that sort. But I always can tell the bots, they might have like 300,000 followers, but then they might have five likes versus I seen celebrities we've had on the show got over 500,000 followers and they hitting them likes hard. Like the likes still going three, four weeks later. You're like, yo. So I'm just saying, what advice would you give entrepreneurs, business owners on the Instagram side of things? Or would you say it's it's comparable to the Instagram? I mean, to the uh, YouTube one stage. Thing, one thing you got to understand is this too. It's what type of Instagram you want to build. See, those people that be having all those followers, they got a million fans. But would you rather have a million fans or 130 customers? 130,000 customers. I want customers. I don't want fans. I don't want people watching me. That's not what I'm here for. I want people learning from me and I want people paying me for the information that I'm giving and the knowledge that I'm giving. So when it comes to Instagram, you got to understand this. Do not get discouraged because a lot of those celebrities got fake fake followers. They have fake automated likes when they like it. And they even have a thing online where you can put real comments. So it's going to be like real people. It's going to look like real comments. If you go on a celebrity page, as soon as they post a picture, you will see a bunch of bots pop up. The reason why the bots are popping up is because their Instagram account is linked to an automated bot created like. So if you ever see somebody on Instagram, you don't know nothing about these motherfuckers. You don't know who they is. Nothing about them, but they got 300, 400,000 likes on this, 300,000 likes on that. It's fake. The reason why I'm able to grow my mind so organically is because I do it organically. I've never put an ad on any of my videos. I've never done anything. And, and one thing about a motivational speaker, you got to understand this. When you're being positive on the internet, it is very hard for you to go viral. Everybody wants negativity. I'm not on there asking a woman to shake her behind or running into a store smacking people. I tell everybody, I'm a king, not a clown. A clown wants attention, a king wants respect. So it's going to be a little bit harder when you really want to be a king because you gotta, you're going you're gonna, to you're do things a little bit different. But one thing I, I, I got to make you guys understand is this. Your 5,000 customers is better than their 5 million followers. Understand that. Because a lot of those guys, if you notice them, they rich, they famous, but they online talking about promo, promo, promo. A rich man ain't fucking got no time to talk about promo. So that's how I know you still surviving. So you got to be able to weed out what's real. America says, statistically, over 95%, 85% of people live tech to check, including the social media gurus. So by knowing this and educating yourself about the world economics, that's the one thing I always did. I, I educate myself on what's going on in the world. So I know when a person is lying to me. I know when a person is trying to put up a front because I, I came from that. You had to put up a little front to get to where you had to be. I watch people like Greg Cardone. They all put on fronts until they made it. They all did it. Now you're trying to do it. But what I'm trying to tell you is by faking your success, it's called mental suicide. Let me repeat that. By faking your success will give you mental suicide. And the reason why you're doing this is because you're putting the 12, every night you're going to lay down in bed and you're going to realize, I ain't did shit. All this shit fake. And to lie to yourself is mental suicide. You're going to wake up one day and be sick of this fake ass life. That's why I tell everybody, live your truth. Take it one day at a time. Let that shit build. If you never stop, your Instagram will grow. I started my Instagram in the shelter. Look at it now. Look at it now, ladies and gentlemen. My whole page is ads. Every time you see me speaking, I drop a quote on there. It's ad. I figured out if I go on seven to six podcasts, I don't have to shoot no content for the whole year. I'm going to take them reels, chop them up, and make a million videos. Now I'm giving you a taste. So now when them customers come, hey, we want to book you, want to book you, want to book you. Yeah, 45000 Because I didn't come to you. You came to me. And if you say 10000 I'm going to walk away. Because respect in business is very important. Gossip in business is real. And if you allow an individual to go tell that they talked you down to 10000 
and knock down a whole 30,000? Boy, you just watch your company crumble. It's respect over money. Value, value. It's the number one word you got to write on your board, King. Anything you want to do, increase the value you have. As I said in the intro, you know, you purchased a 25% stake in the Legends Miami Shoe Store, man. We got to talk about that, man. We've had this brother on the show. If y'all haven't heard, if you have sneakers, you have wealth. And I believe in that, too, because, you know, the house I live in, I purchased with with sneaker money. Man, and houses this, but, and shoes is like real estate. Exactly. And that's what I've been trying to tell people. But I'm just saying, like, for you, you know, from your uh, from a business point of view, what made you, you know, put down 25 percent? Uh, Juan, the person he is, who he is, a lovable, great guy, man. That 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 rides for his brothers by any means. He he gonna he gonna he gonna have your back. And um, we end up going on a trip doing the Dallas South by um the Dallas Sneaker Con. I end up speaking at the Dallas Sneaker Con. Um, shout out to Juan. Juan one one of the guys that helped make that happen as well. Um, went out there did it. Was talking business, talking life. I was seeing how these guys were moving these shoes right there on the spot. I like I, I need it. You know I'm a person that do business off vibes, man. I do business off of off, 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 off of vibes, man. If, if people got good hearts, I know that they already want Because God blesses those with great hearts, man. I want to be on that team. I want to be around that. I don't give a fuck about them shoes, but I do care about building a, a brotherhood. Yeah, definitely, man. No, he's a good dude, man. He helped me. Like I tell people all the time, man, you know, I was about to get married. I ain't realized how much wedding costs. I'm thinking, you know, five, ten thousand 10000 for everything. Not, oh, no, that's just for the flowers. That's just, so, you know, I, you know, met, I met one that he went to, he was at a UCF sneaker convention, man. I had all the hottest shoes at the time and he bought them all off me. No low ball, nothing. So it was kind of like, you know, I got all that cash paid for what I needed. So I called him up. I think, I, I think I called that guy like every two or three days and we would meet up like at Pollo Tropical on the east side of Orlando, like 11 at night, just getting it. So I, and you know, I also want to send him a shout out because he sent you my way for Black Men Sunday. So, gotta show my brother some love. So without, so without, you know, because because like I said, I mean, I wouldn't even without Juan connecting us to, you wouldn't be on Black Men Sundays today. I would, we wouldn't be getting all this knowledge, you know. And so I appreciate you. I and salute man, I don't you. just want to do this with you either, King. I want to host a men's mental health event on behalf of Black Men Sunday, and I want I want to make it an annual thing, bro. Okay. With me and you, bro. I really want to do that. I got a message for the people, man. For my people, man. And I really got a gift at this, so I know that my message will be a blessing to the people in the Florida area, and I believe we can take it all over Florida. So that's another conversation for another day. I want to talk to my brother about. I believe that. Black Man Sunday is just a beautiful, 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 beautiful name. And um, uh, I believe a Black Man Sunday mental health event with William K. Hollis, um, powered by Black Man Sunday, will be fucking legendary. And we'll pack the house out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, man. We definitely going to have to do that. We're definitely going to talk about that, man. Because like I tell all our guests, you could have been anywhere in the world. And but you came through on Black Men Sundays, brother. So I salute you as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell everybody else. Black Men Sundays doing a turkey event this year. We're doing a Central Florida turkey event. We're taking care of right now. We're doing 20 families, but I'm going to send some donations out. I'm going to get some donations going So and hit my brothers up. So like I said, we, we right now we're doing 20, but if I can get up to 50 or 60, we're doing the turkeys. We're going to do it a week before. I got to salute Dream Lake Elementary and Apopka. They gave us the the freezer because I was kind of looking at the wife like, okay, our deep freezer ain't gonna hold all these <laughs> big turkeys, you know what I mean? A lot of people got kids down here, so she was like, so I, I reached out to some of my partners, and I had the principal, um, Dr. Clinton March. She actually came on Black Men Sundays too. You know, we out here, man. We about eighty nine shows deep. You know, and also, the team, tell the people, tell them, teach. I don't know what it is. I gotta say this, Black Superintendent. Please book the number one youth speaker in the world. Y'all keep, you want to keep bringing rappers and tell your kids to kill people, but you don't bring nobody to change their mindset. Please, it is, and I got to say this on Black Men Sunday, it is a disjustice 
of what black educators are doing when it comes to the messengers that they're allowing inside the schools. We got to do better with getting the right men, men like Black Men Sundays, to come in and speak to children about financial literacy and changing their life because they're doing a terrible job right now. I'm being booked by more Caucasian schools than I am black schools, and I don't make, I'm from the trenches, dog. And all that shows me is a Willie Lynch mentality. The only thing I notice when I go into those schools, I see pop, I see black men full of ego. That because they watching this, this little black boy come in from the projects that can impact and touch some kids, they hate it. That's the type of sickness that we got into in our community, bro. And that shit got to stop, bro, because kids are dying because of them. They dying because of them. Because you don't want to, you want to bring future to the school. They talk about uh, uh, sex and chaos and killing. But you don't want to bring no man and talk about uplifting the black man and, and, and telling the black woman that she got. You don't want none of that. You want all that bullshit. And that's, that's the problem. Everybody talking about what's the problem. We the problem. We the problem. Ain't got nothing to do with no white man no more. That's dead. We the problem. Our egos, our nut dropping competition, we always want to do when we in the room with each other. You walk in a room full of white men, you comfortable. You walk in a room full of black men, you look like you're looking at all the enemies you ever had. That's sickening. That's sickening. And we got to change that mentality. And it starts with our youth. So all our black teachers and our black educators, Start bringing me in that can change the mindset. Definitely, man. I appreciate you, man, because, you know, that's what, you know, I'm doing in my community here, man. You know, I go to the schools, um, community centers, all that. So we definitely, you know, we definitely changing the narrative, giving somebody, you know, when I come in there, I might have my do-rag hat on, braid it up. They're like, oh, wow. But mm -hmm. but when I open my mouth, they say, like, oh, okay, I see why they sent you. So I appreciate you, William King Hollis, man, the number one motivational speaker in the world. Thanks for pulling up on Black Men Sundays, brother. Enjoy the rest of your day today and enjoy the rest of your week, my brother. You too, Kings. Win the day, baby. It's a Black Man Sunday.